Hi there, Sam here. I'm talking about Romeo and Juliet in this video and in particular I'm talking about the Romeo and Juliet exam question itself. So, Romeo and Juliet in the exam as part of the GCSE English Literature exams you'll answer one question about Romeo and Juliet. You won't be allowed to have a copy of the play with you in the exam so it's really important that you revise it thoroughly before you go in. The question will give you a short extract from the play and it will ask you to write about how Shakespeare presents a particular theme or idea both in the extract and in the play as a whole. You'll get marked on assessment objectives. You might know them as AOs. AO stands for assessment objective. And these are the things that the examiner is taking into account as they go through your exam and check your answers. So here I'm going to give you a brief rundown of what the assessment objectives are and what an examiner will be looking for. I'll start with saying it in examiner speak and then I'll break that down for you and explain what that means in sort of everyday English. So AO1, the examiner says, read, understand and respond to texts. Students should be able to maintain a critical style and develop an informed personal response and students should be able to use textual references including quotations to support and illustrate interpretations. Well, what does that mean? That means you, you can show you have read and understood the text. You can give your own personal ideas and thoughts about the play and you can use quotes from the text as evidence to back up your points. Probably goes without saying, but the more detailed and developed your answers are, then the more marks you're going to pick up. AO2 then, the uh, examiner talk, it says analyse the language, form and structure used by a writer to create meanings and effects using relevant subject terminology where appropriate. What does that mean? That means that you'll be able to talk about the way that Shakespeare wrote the play. You'll be able to analyse the language that Shakespeare used and why he used it and you'll be able to analyse the way that he structured the play and why he chose to structure it in that way. Uh, you also need to be able to talk about the effects that Shakespeare's choices have made on the audiences at the time and also a contemporary audience as well and how they would respond upon events taking place in the play. Now AO3 it says here, show understanding of the relationships between texts and the contexts in which they were written. Now, the first part of that AO, you don't have to worry about show understanding of the relationships between texts. Actually, you'll answer that when you come to your poetry questions. The bit you need to worry about with Romeo and Juliet is the context in which it was written. It means that you can describe how the play's context affects the way it was written. So therefore you can show that you can understand what life was like at the time the play was written and what Im uh, events influenced Shakespeare to write the play. It means you can talk about how this affected Shakespeare's writing and talk about how an audience again in Shakespeare's time but also a contemporary modern day audience would have reacted and do react to the play. <clears throat> Finally, please, please, please don't forget AO4, uh, which says use a range of vocabulary and sentence structures for clarity, purpose and effect with accurate spelling and punctu punctuation. You are marked for your spag, so you need to be as accurate as you possibly can with spelling, punctuation and grammar in order to win a few more marks in the exam for that. Don't forget that the information in this video is also available in written form in our Romeo and Juliet revision guide and you can find that on the Twinkle website. You can also find a whole load more revision videos on our YouTube channel. Please check those out if this one is useful to you.
Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.